so I am thrilled to be welcoming Ellen Chang Richardson to the virtual stage next. Ellen Chang Richardson is an award-winning poet of Taiwanese and Chinese Cambodian descent. The author of Blood Belies, which is published by Wolzak and Wynn, just this month, and six poetry chapbooks. Their multi-genre writing has been published in Augur, Room, Valum, among others. They co-founded Riverbed Reading Series and write collaboratively with the Poetry Collective Seven. Welcome, Ellen. It is lovely to have you. Thank you so much, Hale. And thank you, Crystal, for having all of us here to celebrate National Poetry Month. Courtney and Patrick, those were incredible readings. And I actually loved listening to the the stories behind, you know, the titles of your book and, and the collect the content of your books. Um, I'm gonna read one poem tonight from my uh, debut collection, Blood Belies. Um, Blood Belies, the reason it's called Blood Belies is because we're in April right now, but next month, May is Asian Heritage Month. And about five years ago, five, five or four years ago, I was sitting in a cafe and I was wondering to myself, why the heck, like, why is May of all months Asian Heritage Month? Like I'm Asian 365 days out of the year. Like why, why this one month? And so I, I fell into a rabbit hole and I found out that, you know, in Canada, uh, even though communities have been celebrating their Asian heritage since you know, the early 90s, late 80s, you know, whatever, for time immemorial. Um, Vivian, the Senate actually adopted a motion proposed by Senator Vivian Poi in 2001 to make May Asian Heritage Month um, and to celebrate that. And, and then it was you know, made official in 20, uh, 2002. And uh, 2023 actually marched the, marked the 100th anniversary since the Chinese Exclusion Act which was the only act in the history of Canada's immigration uh, that was based on the basis of race alone. Um, and that Chinese people were not allowed to immigrate even if they had British nationality because they were Chinese. And so I you know, fell down this rabbit hole and I thought to myself, oh, this sucks. Uh, how do I reconcile this? You know, how do I move forward? Um, because to me, like, yeah, even when I talk, talk about this with um, my colleagues, my friends, my fellow poets, like I, I, I talk about how Asianness is not just East Asia, it's Southeast Asia, it's South Asia, it's West Asia, it's the biggest, like after Africa, it's the, it's one of the biggest continents in the world. And there are so many diverse cultures that come together in this beautiful melting pot. And so then I thought about class structures. And um, and how class structures are dictated by blood, and the blood that we have is equates to the status that we're given. And really, that belies because that's a lie. We're all just people. We're the same flesh, bone, blood, shit. <laughs> so um, yeah. So most of the poem, most of the poems in the collection are are excavating that, and there's there's a lot of memory as well. I've had eight concussions and so that flows undercurrent to the collection in that like Patrick said memory splices memories fragmented it's never really what it is but then it is because you remember it the way that it is um and like Hale said poetry is a portal so I'm going to read courtyard acupuncture which is a little bit of a love poem to fragmented memory In flame, bass notes hang like dust, their feathered edges torn in wind. Curve. Those jasmine scented wax flies melting into beads as mosquito powder brushes against my veins. Finger tips, bright red dew, linger briefly just as antique petals do against my skin. 